How can we track a storm in Excel? This is an example of Hurricane Irma, which uh, formed in August 30th, 2017 and dissipated in September 13th, 2017. And uh, this is a 3D map created in Excel. How does it work? We have the globe over here, we have the data plotted, and we can actually play the animation and see how the storm happens and how it became a hurricane. You can play with the map nicely. And here is the actual data in Excel. And I'm going to show you how we can get this. You can find a link to the file below the video. We're going to need the data from the web. You can go to the website you are familiar with. I'm going to floridahurricane.com and uh, I'm going to click on maps and coordinates on the left over here. And then Hurricane Irma happened in 2017. If you have a current storm, you will just go with it and take the file and actually you can refresh the data in real time in Excel. I'm going to show you how. So let's go to 2017 and that's Hurricane Irma I'm going to click. And I'm looking for a file, so I will take the comma separated values file over here. And all I need is just the path. So I'm going to copy the path. The next step is to get the data into Excel. So I'm going to the data tab from web and I'm going to actually paste the link. You normally just go from here and load. This is a query so it can refresh with the data from the web. But what I notice over here is that the longitude is not correct. We actually have to make the longitude negative. So for that reason, I'm going to actually have to click edit to be able to edit the query. Now the longitude over here has to have a negative. So this should be, so the 30.3 should be negative 30.3. And I'm going to use a little trick. I'm going to click on transform and I'll click on format to find add prefix so that I can actually add a minus, a negative sign in front of my number. And then I simply make it back from text into decimal number. And that's it. Now I can simply close the query and I will keep the changes. The changes are over here on the right. So when I refresh the data from the web, say I have a current storm, then I will basically add each time I will add the minus sign in front of the longitude to have it correct. So I'm going to keep all the changes. The data is pulled nicely into Excel. We can actually see on the right the query connection right there. And we are ready to create our 3D map, which is very easy to create. So we simply go to Insert 3D Map. We're going to have to give you the location, so let's click under the location over here, add field latitude, and what is that? It's a latitude, and then add field again, and I'm going to choose my longitude, and I am sure to specify exactly what it is. I can basically see the coordinates now, but that's not enough. So say we are interested in the wind, so I'm going to add on the height, and going to select here the wind. The next step will be to record the time. So I have the date over here. Once you're recording the time, then you can actually play the animation. I have two dates, the date, uh, you know, recorded date and the date when the data was received. I'm just going the uh, formal date. You can plot the data how you want from here, but what I really like is to change the visualization to a heat map, which looks like that. And that's pretty much it. The, re the rest is just cosmetics. So I can now play it and see my animation. I can pause it for a moment. I can see the time over here. And I can go ahead and maybe add the map labels. And if you want, you can uh, play the themes over here. I'm going to choose this one. And what happens is what we've created here is what's called the tour. So let's play it and see how it looks like. Whenever you tell a story, you have to be sure it is the right story. I'm looking at the winds over here, 230 miles, and I know that's too much. So let's minimize and let's take a look at the data. 
that's the wind column and this is a table. So we can go to the design tab and show the total row. To be able to choose a function, I'm going to choose the maximum function to see that actually the wind speed is 185 miles, not 230. So let me go back to the map and let's see what's wrong. Now, if I try to take a look and see the values over here, I cannot really see them nicely. So let me change the visualizations back to stacked column. And this way I can spot quickly the big numbers. Like for example, this one. This one shows me winds of 230 miles. And I can see latitude 17.6, longitude 49.8. We have these exact same coordinates with two records over here. So we have wind speeds of 115 and they are recorded at different times. So that's why we have 115 plus 115, 230. So how can we correct that? We have to look at the wind speed over here and notice that actually there is the sum function which we do not need. We do not need to aggregate the wind speeds. I'm going to choose no aggregation. And let's go back to the heat map. And that's pretty much it. So we are ready to close. I'm going to close the 3D map from the close button. And I'm back in Excel where we actually have a query over here. So if this were a real storm, you would just go to the query button over here and you can refresh it. Also over here you have connections, so if you want you can go to properties and manage the properties. Maybe you want to refresh every whatever minutes. Okay. Now you're going to notice this little note over here that this Excel file actually has a 3D map associated with it. How do you get back to it? You have to click on the insert tab and go back to the 3D map and here is the tour. And remember you can create how many tours you want. That's it. I hope you enjoyed tracking a hurricane or storm in Excel. Thank you.